Kennywood is the main amusement park in the Pittsburgh area and it is a special place. This is one of the country's oldest amusement parks and it's one of two designated as a National Historic Landmark. This place is rich with history. However, the park isn't afraid to evolve, adding modern attractions and even some record-breaking roller coasters. I see a lot of criticism directed towards Kennywood, but I have always had a pleasant time here. In fact, I think this is a bucket list park. Find out why in this review. Kennywood opened way back in 1899 as a trolley park targeted towards the working class. As the park grew over time to feature a notable collection of rides and roller coasters, the park eventually formed the Kennywood Entertainment Company and started operating some additional parks in the Northeast such as Lake Compounds and the nearby Idlewild. But in 2007, the Kennywood Entertainment Company was sold to the Spanish company Parques Reunidos and it's operated now under the U.S. subsidiary of Palace Entertainment. All of my visits to Kennywood have occurred over the past decade since the park was sold. Maybe the park was even better before it was sold, but I still find the park pretty darn unique. Located in West Mifflin, this park has been heavily shaped by its location. This park is located atop a ravine overlooking a river. Many of the park's coasters use this terrain to their advantage, resulting in some truly memorable rides and visuals. You have the famous second drop of Phantom's Revenge, the final drops on Thunderbolt, and the double down Jackrabbit, all using this ravine. The park also doesn't have much land to work with. Kennywood has 80 acres in total, but roughly half of that is dedicated to the parking lot. The 40-ish acres used for the amusement park itself are 100% developed. So when Kennywood adds something new, they usually need to remove an attraction. The park has kept many classic attractions. They have one of the best wood coaster collections of any amusement park. And there are some rare attractions you cannot find elsewhere. But sometimes a fan favorite is retired. Occasionally, Kennywood will refurbish that ride and reopen that attraction a few years later. It happened previously with the Bayern Curve, and it's happening again in 2022 with the Kangaroo. Other times, a ride is retired for good. Kennywood still has a classic old-timey feel to it. The park has a lot of old rides and buildings, fostering that traditional amusement park atmosphere. And the park has a good amount of greenery. It's not called Kennywood for nothing. But peppered throughout the park are modern thrillers. And this park likes to make waves. Steel Phantom opened in 1991. This arrow looper set the records for the largest drop with its 225 foot or 69 meter tall plunge down the ravine and also the fastest coaster with an 80 mile per hour or 130 km per hour top speed. This coaster has since been transformed by Morgan in a Phantom's Revenge, but the signature drop is still the focal point of the ride. Most recently the park built Steel Curtain an SNS multi-looper that set the record for the world's tallest inversion with a 197 foot or 60 meter tall Drakenfire dive loop and it also has the most inversions on a roller coaster in North America with 9. Steel Curtain is also part of a little themed area known as Steelers Country. While I despise the Steelers as a Patriots fan, I know how important this team is to the local fan base and it was a brilliant decision by the park to theme a section to their highly popular sports team. The area is mostly about Steel Curtain, but you also have some gift shops and football related games. The only other themed area in Kennywood is Thomastown, which has a small collection of kiddie rides themed to the show's characters. The rest of the park doesn't really have any theming, but that's fine because the overall atmosphere is so strong because the park is very well maintained, it looks nice, and oozes history. The overall park is super compact. 40 acres is not much land to build 8 different roller coasters, including 2 hyper coasters and 3 wood coasters. The largest rides are placed in the perimeter of the park. This means there isn't much space left for pathways. You can walk from one side of Kennywood to the other in less than 5 minutes, but it's a very dense park with plenty to see and do. There are a few dead ends though, most notably the lost Kennywood and Steelers country areas but the layout makes it fast and easy to get around. The only tricky thing can be finding Phantom's entrance, 
which is underneath the first drop, which is set quite a ways back from the station and exit. Now let's talk about the arrival experience. Despite being a major chain park, Kennywood shockingly still has free parking. You park on a hill across the street from the park. You get some neat views of the skyline from here, and it really gets you hyped up for your day. Most notably, from 1996 through 2020, the parking lot was home to Kenny's Parkway, a chairlift that would take you from the upper levels of the parking lot down to the main entrance. Now I never saw this chairlift in use, which is probably a good thing. It was only used in the busiest of days when people had to use the entire parking lot. Kennywood is a quaint entrance. It has a really cool carousel horse, plus timeless architecture, and the park's iconic yellow arrow logo. Day tickets have gone up quite a bit in recent years, but I still think they're a great value considering the depth and uniqueness of Kennywood's lineup. At the gate, day tickets cost $65, but you can get major discounts online. You can buy 2022 tickets for $45 currently, but as recently as 2020, I was able to get tickets online for just $23, so just keep checking back. Or you can purchase a season pass for $80, which I think is a great deal. I have the higher priced Palace Platinum Pass because Lake Compounds is one of my home parks. Now maybe this changed from 2021, but if you had a Palace Platinum Pass and your home park was not Kennywood, you couldn't go straight to the turnstiles. The scanners at the gate could not process non-Kennywood Platinum Passes. I had to go to guest relations who would give me a paper ticket to enter the park. I hope this process gets simplified in the future, because all the palace parks seem to process these passes differently last year. Once inside the main gate, you cross the road via an underground tunnel. Kennywood and western Pennsylvania are known for massive rainstorms and flooding, and fair warning, if one of those storms occurs while you're at Kennywood, this tunnel will flood and it's the only way out. The reveal of the main park once you emerge from the tunnel is magical though between the sights and sounds. One of the biggest issues with Kennywood are the operations. This seems to be the number one thing that can derail a visit to Kennywood. First, let's talk about the hours. The parking gates typically open at 10.30 a.m. However, rides do not start operating until 11 a.m. So you should use this half hour to queue up for your first attraction. I'll talk about the best touring plan for Kennywood in a bit. Kennywood often has late hours. In the peak summer months, they're often open until 10 p.m. Then for their Halloween event, they're sometimes open as late as midnight. However, the closing time stated on the calendar is not a guarantee, more so than other parks. Their closing time depends on crowds. If the park is too quiet, even in perfect weather, expect them to close sooner. If this happens, there will be a sign out front and an announcement on the updated closing time. Kennywood's closing time represents the final time the rides will cycle, so most rides will close their queue lines early based on the current wait times. So if you want your final ride on a specific attraction, plan accordingly. Prior to your visit, you definitely want to consult the website. It was redesigned for 2022, but in past years, Kennywood would list two important items. First, they'd state which rides were closed. This would include extended closures and daily closures, so you can make sure the rides you cared about were open before visiting. Second, they'd state if any of their roller coasters were operating with just one train. This information could change how you toured the park. Kennywood has a tendency to start with one train and a few of their coasters. If a ride gets a long wait, maintenance will add a second train later in the day. The two rides that seem to do this the most are Thunderbolt and Phantom's Revenge. I find dispatches of this park to be solid. If a line is moving slowly, usually it's due to a ride running just one train, which isn't the fault of the frontline employees. The crew at Phantom's Revenge in particular stands out. It probably helps that Phantom has no air gates and simple restraints, but that crew rarely stacks, so the park's signature attraction usually has a manageable weight. There are four rides that routinely have the worst weights. I'd prioritize these. Number one is Steel Curtain. This is not only the park's newest roller coaster, but it is a temperamental ride. It has had a lot of downtime since opening, including not operating for the entire 2020 season. 
and it has a tendency to run just one train. Add in super slow operations and this line crawls. If it's running one train, it can easily have a 1-2 to two hour wait. If Steel Curtain is operational, I would head here first between its popularity, capacity, and reliability. Afterwards, I would hightail it across the park to Lost Kennywood. Priority number two should be Exterminator. This indoor spinning wild mouse only seats four riders per vehicle, at most. Groups often aren't paired, so it often goes out with less than four people. This not only is a capacity nightmare, but the queue line is miserable in summer. It is a hot, sweaty, and loud box, and the ride is not worth the hour wait it usually commands. Priority 3 should be Black Widow. This is another temperamental ride, but it's a high profile attraction with a lower capacity than most of the park's coasters, and it's right by Exterminator. The other roller coaster that routinely gets a long line is Skyrocket, but because it's by the main entrance, it probably already has a long line by this point. You're best off heading back to Skyrocket in the second half of the day once people have progressed further into the park. The other lines typically aren't more than 20 to 30 minutes at worst, but I expect to see worse crowds on Saturdays. If lines are a major issue, you can purchase a VIP coaster tour to skip the line pass. It is really pricey though, routinely costing well over $100. I have never purchased it since the ride I want to marathon most in Fam's Revenge usually has a short wait. Moving on to the ride lineup, Kennywood really shines here. Let's start with the really strong coaster lineup. Pretty much every coaster here is unique between the layout, location, and or history. Phantom's Revenge is my favorite. This unconventional hyper coaster has that epic second drop. Getting strong ejector airtime while staring down a ravine and passing through Thunderbolt is breathtaking. Phantom's Revenge is a speed demon that also mixes in some underrated positive Gs, but the ride's bread and butter is that powerful airtime. Every single hill in the second half tries to launch you into orbit, and it's especially thrilling because of how minimalistic the restraints are. You have just a seatbelt and a shockingly loose lap bar. The entire experience is just so rewritable. I have a separate review going into more detail, but this is easily a top 10 steel coaster for me. Steel Curtain is the other hyper coaster, and it's just as unconventional. The ride looks like a Kinex coaster with its convolute support structure, and it's a surprisingly compact ride given its size. But it offers a pretty diverse layout. I heard it was running slow for me in my visit, as I mentioned in my review, but I still appreciate the mix of inversions and airtime. I loved the visuals on the massive elements in the first half, but my favorite part was that little section that jutted out from the main layout. The airtime on the camelback and hang time on the stall were marvelous. Skyrock is a premier rides launch coaster. The launch is just okay, but the layout has some really strong elements. I love the double pops of ejector airtime on the top hat, and if you're in the back car, you also get some wild airtime off the mid course. Then the zero G roll and corkscrew will both lift you out of your seat as well. The ride does fizzle out towards the end, but the first two thirds are great and the entire ride is super smooth. Exterminator is an indoor Revershawn spinning wild mouse. While it is your standard layout and may not spin too much, the dark atmosphere makes what little spinning you get more disorienting, and the few visuals along the course are a fun touch. Then you have a trio of old wooden roller coasters all of which are well maintained and have pre-minimalistic restraints. Thunderbolt is my favorite of the bunch. This is one of the best coasters for laterals. The middle section will pin riders to the side of the train, then the rise a few pops of airtime and the larger drops down the ravine at the end. Just note that you must have a partner to ride. Pre-COVID, Kennywood would pair single riders in the station, but this practice was paused during the pandemic understandably. Racer is probably the tamest of the bunch, but if you ride in the back, there are still a few drops that'll pop you out of your seat. But the highlight of the ride is the racing element. It is so satisfying slapping hands with the opposing train and finding out who will get to the finish line first in this Mobius coaster. Jackrabbit has the height limit of a family coaster, and 90% of the ride is pretty slow and tame, but that double down is one of the wildest moments on any roller coaster as I mentioned in my review. 
The second part of the double down to the ravine offers one of the most shocking ejector airtime moments out there. Your life is in the hands of the ride seatbelt. Lastly, you have the infamous Lil Phantom Kitty Coaster that has a cult following. It is the perfect starter coaster for kids, and yes, coaster enthusiasts can't experience this attraction without a kid. On that note, Kennywood has two dedicated children's areas in the back of the park. Kitty Land is the older and larger section. There are a dozen rides here in close proximity designed specifically for kids, so they could spend hours here bouncing ride to ride. Thomas Town is the more modern area. You have a few additional kiddie rides that can more comfortably accommodate adults and the rethemed old Kennywood Railroad. The latter is a park staple and it offers a scenic route along the ravine. Auto Race is located next to Kitty Land and it's a must for theme park historians. This is the last of its kind. Built by Traver, it's a variant on your classic antique car ride. The classic cars move faster and they go through a unique wooden trough. Another area where Kennywood excels is in the dark ride department. Some classic ones have been removed over the years, but the park still features a notable trio. Ghostwood Estates is the best of the bunch. This trackless shooting dark ride takes place in a well-themed mansion with fully fleshed out physical sets. This ride has far more detail and superior atmosphere to the Boo Blasters rides, and most targets cause props to react in some way. Noah's Ark is a classic funhouse in a giant rocking boat. I don't want to spoil anything, but there are better visuals than most funhouses in here, and some unique gags. Old Mill is a slow boat ride. The ride is over 120 years old, but there was a stretch where it was transformed into the abomination known as Garfield's Nightmare. The current version has a rustic feel to it, with some kid-friendly visuals. For water rides, the best option is the Raging Rapids. This intimate built attraction has a scenic setting with the trees and rock work, and it's very refreshing too. There are several turbulent and soaking rapids, plus a surprise double geyser. Then Pittsburgh Plunge is a standard Hopkins shoot the shoots ride that produces a massive splash, but it looks great as the centerpiece of Lost Kennywood. The park also used to have a good log flume in the log jammer with a sizable final plunge and a unique uphill section but it was removed for Steel Curtain a few years ago. Kennywood does not have an attached water park, and they likely never will because Palace owns the nearby Sandcastle water park. I've never been there, but it seems like a solid place. For flat rides, you have a mix of modern thrillers, standard staples, and rare classics. Of the thrill rides, there are three of note. Swing Shaw is an SNS scream and swing. This pendulum rides a short cycle, but it offers some nice floater airtime on the max swings. Black Widow is a Zamperla giant discovery. This ride has always been closed for me, but I've ridden clones of this ride at the Six Flags parks that produce good floater airtime on the max swings and solid positive Gs in the down swings. And this one is sure to offer amazing visuals given its proximity to the ravine. Then Aero 360 is a Zamperla inverting pendulum ride loaded with hang time and it uniquely was designed to look like the park's logo. The park is sadly missing a major drop tower. They used to have a great one in Pitfall. That Intamin creation opened as the world's tallest drop tower, but it felt even taller overlooking the ravine. Beyond the visuals, the drop was also quite forceful, but the ride was removed due to maintenance issues. Of the classics, there are a few worth experiencing. Kangaroo is returning for 2022, and this unique spinning ride is one where the vehicles launch off a ramp. When they go airborne, riders get a fun pop of airtime and lateral simultaneously. I love this little ride. Turtle is the last remaining tumble bug. The ride isn't particularly thrilling. It feels like a small and slow powered coaster, but there are zero restraints, so you slide around as the cars navigate the course. The Whip is the park's oldest flat ride, and while there are others that are run faster, this one is oddly exposed, and if you haven't been on one, you should try it. Lastly, there's the classic merry-go-round, which is a Pittsburgh landmark. Built by Denzel, this ride has hand-carved horses and a beautiful Wurlitzer band organ. For food, the number one dining location is the Potato Patch. These award-winning hand-cut french fries are amazing, 
they're super fresh. I like them plain, but I know people love the toppings as well. I haven't gotten a regular meal here in over a decade because I usually save room for a permani sandwich after leaving. One rule that Palace thankfully has maintained is that guests can bring food into the park to have their own picnic. This can really help families save money. And the picnic area offers some great views of the coasters. Lastly, I want to note that I've only visited Kennywood in the summer months. I have heard good things about their Halloween event, but I cannot speak about that one or their Christmas event from experience. So do I recommend Kennywood? Absolutely. This is a must for both coaster lovers and lovers of amusement park history. The way Kennywood has blended modern thrills with rare classics is special. You have so many rides you cannot find elsewhere. There's a true standout coaster in Phantom's Revenge, and a deep supporting cast of attractions that can appease all tastes. And then the park has a real charm to it. It feels like you've walked back in time when you enter into Kennywood, and it's magical when you come across that modern coaster too. The one downside with this park are some of the operational quirks, but what Kennywood does well far outweighs these cons. So those are my thoughts on Kennywood, the flagship park in the Palace Entertainment chain. What are your thoughts on this Western Pennsylvania amusement park? Do you appreciate this park's ride lineup and history as much as me? Let me know your thoughts about this park down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.